What we have here is uh, a video of, again, a world premiere installation, or actually just a test, uh, a test uh, installing of a single row of arch lock uh, that will give you a six meter uh, span or 20 feet. This is the very first time this has been put up. We didn't even put it up ourselves yet. This is the, what you're witnessing is the first one going up. So some of the things we do take quite a bit more time than they would once, uh, if this was being built commercially, it would go in quite a bit more quickly because uh, there's a very fast learning curve on how this goes up. But we thought it would be informative to video the first time so you could see some of the the mistakes we're doing, we've made and, and what takes time. Um, right now you can see that lock being lowered into position is being lowered in approximately the correct configuration. On uh, the other video we put up for our three meter arch, the loader operators were uh, full time operators. The guy doing this uh, installation is one of the supervisors because all the operation, operators are busy. Anyways, uh, it still goes reasonably quickly, even with inexperienced crew and the very first time this is ever put up. So we think we really have a winner in this system. Uh, the, the way we achieve holding these things at these bouzoir, uh is what they're called, bouzoirs. Uh, the, the way we achieve holding them at a specific angle is that we have a, a two-chain sling there that's adjustable. So we can adjust each leg and as each bouzoir goes up, there's a different mating angle for it to the uh, bouzoir underneath it. Therefore, we can uh, change the, uh, the angle just by changing the length of the two chains. Um, this is the same angle as the one on the opposite side so that we didn't have to readjust the chains. And I don't think it shows in the video here us doing some of this chain adjustment and stuff. Uh, uh, we didn't want to bore you to death. I think the uncut video is quite long, so we're just giving you more or less the salient points here. We feel there's uh, some very good applications for this type of construction and I'm probably repeating myself again from the first video where we did a 10 foot or a three foot uh, a 10 foot or a three meter span but this is not new technology the Romans did this some of these structures that are built very similarly to this uh, 3,000 years ago by the Romans are still in daily use at the present time so the reason for this longevity over modern structures, like modern highway overpasses, have to be knocked down after 85 to 100 years because that's the lifespan of steel reinforced concrete. As the steel reinforcing corrodes, it expands and it, it cracks the concrete, which lets more water, more air in, and, it, and cracks the concrete even more because as the rebar rusts, it gets more and more to it to the extent that after 85 to 100 years, most of these overpasses have reached the end of their life and they must be deconstructed, knocked down, and a new one built. If you don't have tensile forces in your structure, you don't need the steel to withstand the tensile forces, therefore concrete will work if it's all in compression. So the Roman arch is a compressive structure. All of these uh, blocks that we're putting up uh, have purely compression and a little bit of shear in them, but concrete's okay with that. It's just the tension forces that concrete is not very good at. So by designing a structure that has no tensile forces, we can build it out of a compressive material like concrete, and it can sit there for centuries and be stable and be sound, and uh, hopefully the, the, the longevity of the concrete will be in the thousands of years, uh, but that's, that's sort of a different category. The present time right now, one of the, the, the best things that these could be used for is uh, railway tunnels, uh, particularly through crowded residential areas. 
you could put uh, an installation um, uh, scaffolding on the back of the rail car and for those of you that have seen the zipper truck video that zipper truck is the three meter span we have not built a zipper truck or a, or a, a rolling scaffold for this span yet uh, that'll be the next thing we do but we wanted to get this up and posted so people can see what we're doing the uh, the first commercial use of this is very likely going to be for a wine cellar we have uh, a lot of interested uh, parties and we believe in our local area here in BC um, we hope to have the first wine cellar in place before the end of 2013 um, we still have a few things to get through, but um, when that goes up again, we'll be videoing it and uh, it'll hopefully by the end of 2013, we'll have that on video on the net. Some of the other things this could be used for, tornado shelters, uh, particularly in light of the recent tornadoes down in Oklahoma where uh, there's a lot of lives been lost. We could use this type of a structure. Uh, or we could use, uh, we could make basically concrete igloos. The next uh, addition to this structure that we're going to uh, try to develop is a concave end for it. So it will be like half of a sphere over the end of this tunnel. And uh, if we put two sphere halves together, it becomes a complete half, like a, a half of a cut orange upside down on the table or just an igloo. So we feel, I don't know whether it would be uh, politically correct or not to have concrete igloos in uh, schoolyards or public places. They could be used as play structures, uh, but during a tornado they could become tornado shelters. So uh, I don't know whether that would have any merit for the school districts and stuff, whether they might think it would be too much of a liability to have that sort of thing, but the possibilities are literally endless. The military would have a lot of use for these things. Uh, think mortar-proof mess tents, think munitions, bunkers. Um, Commercially, they could be reclaimed tunnels. This particular size here, at the end of the video, we back a truck underneath it. Uh, this particular size uh, is pretty close to being uh, perfect for single lane highway overpasses. Uh, the inside dimension 20 feet, that might not be correct, but that could be easily modified to whatever span is required for any particular use. This structure is being put up with uh, what we call full blocks, so they're twice as long as they are wide, more or less, and they'll overlap uh, one another. In, a, in an actual structure, they would be stagger bonded, like if you think about laying bricks, you can lay them one on top of the other, and uh, that's called stacking bond. We would prefer them to go in stagger bonds, so you get a much more stable structure that way. Again, I apologize for taking a lot of time on the video with uh, some of the things that we're doing. We're putting the turnbuckles on there and showing as each one gets tightened up. Um, but we know you can fast forward through those moments if you wish, and we thought it was important to show all of the uh, steps taken so uh, people get a good understanding of what we're doing. This is a patented system. Uh, the, the erection with the chains is patented. The erection with the uh, zipper truck is patented. Uh, we'd be happy to answer any questions if people want to uh, call us or go onto our website. So you probably are on our website already if you're seeing this video. But uh, call us or contact us. We'd be happy to answer questions for you. We were running out of uh, height ability, uh, lifting ability with the small, you can see this is an IT-28, a Caterpillar IT-28 with a boom on it. 
and uh, they can only lift so high. The, we have IT38s we could have used, but uh, we chose to show you a different way to put up the last few blocks. Uh, one, because we're running out of height with this machine, and two, it might be the, the machine of choice on commercial job sites. So the last three blocks are actually going in in one unit and we're putting them in with the hydraulic excavator. So the whole structure could be built with an excavator just hanging a chain off the bucket. Um, so here we are with the excavator. This one is, you, as you can see, a 450 size machine and it easily picks up these uh, three blocks. Um, this structure could easily be built, the whole thing, with an excavator like this and uh, ground crew guiding the blocks into position. Uh, one of the things we were learning uh, on the installation here is how far back to pull the sides of the arch with these chains. Uh, I don't think we had it pulled back quite far enough with the chains and we were running out of um, adjustment on them. So what we did is just use the stinger boom to push one side over to get the uh, keyways to interlock. Also on machinery like this, uh, it, it's uh, quite advisable to have a good operator because uh, there's a lot of weight there and just a little bit of a miss uh, can have quite drastic consequences if you smack these things too hard uh, during construction there is a danger it might uh, fall down uh, we don't want to test that at least not at this stage later on when we get a little more experience we, we might consider um, testing uh, the stability by purposely dropping things on it to see how much it takes to break it we're not at that stage yet, we're just still being extremely uh, careful and extremely conservative just to make sure that this first test goes correctly. My feeling is that it is quite uh, a robust system and it will take a lot, of, uh, a lot of abuse during construction because when we build these with the small models on the tabletop, uh, it's very forgiving and it, it takes a lot of uh, abuse even to knock the little models over. So we feel we're safe but we'd much rather err on the side of caution than knock something down uh, before we even get our feet wet. I think we just have to bump that with the excavator, there he comes, just to get that final half inch of clearance in there that we needed to get this, uh, these blocks to set into place. closely at the top bucket. There it is right now and you can see that that load is now taking all the weight itself. Uh, the bucket, the, the excavator is no longer supporting that middle block. So all those chains could be taken off now. That uh, structure will stay there. It does on the tabletop and there's no reason to believe it wouldn't in real life. Um, the, the scale models are, are pretty accurate and, and pretty well made. But again, we are not taking any chances whatsoever. We're leaving all of these uh, chains on. We're putting on an external reinforcement right now, which is basically just a truck strap. Uh, we'll put two of them on. But uh, this yellow truck strap coming across now is just a, a safety strap so that in case some of the machinery running around the yard actually bump into this inadvertently, they're not going to knock it over. We don't think it would happen anyways because as I said, the tabletop models are very stable, 
but again, we do not want to take any chances whatsoever with uh, an experimental uh, structure like this. Hopefully soon they will no longer be considered experimental, but we're not there yet. As you see, we didn't have a long enough truck strap to go over in one shot, so we just hooked two together by slipping the D-rings through each other. So, you see the structure going up now, or you see the structure go up, you see what we plan on reinforcing them, uh, and that reinforcing is, is nearly there during construction to prevent uh, uh, collapse from unforeseen uh, equipment, uh, either malfunction or an operator error. Uh, the last thing you want to have is a precarious structure come down on whatever's below it, uh, endangering people's lives and safety and all the rest of that stuff. So we could use several different methods uh, to reinforce this. We could have cables running over the top, uh, truck straps like this. The beauty of these truck straps, we feel, uh, is that they do they are pro. They, are, they, they will be very easy to put a waterproofing membrane over top without compromising the waterproofing membrane. We could use chains over top of it as well. Just leave one long chain over it. But then, to put a waterproofing membrane over top, you would get wrinkles in the membrane. These truck straps are strong enough and flat enough that we could put a waterproofing membrane over top of this, and the strap will not interfere, will not cause problems, it's not enough of a bulge to uh, have an issue with. So we would envision that most structures that we build would have a waterproofing membrane on them. There may be structures where it's unnecessary, uh, perhaps reclaimed tunnels in a mine would not necessarily have a waterproofing membrane. They might not want it on. Um, even some railway tunnels, say, through river valleys and stuff, if they're nearly there as a, uh, a snow shed or something, uh, they might not uh, want waterproofing. This shot here shows you what the cross-section looks like. We've got both of our truck straps on now. You can see uh, the, the, the whole base, is, well, maybe you can't see, but this whole base is slightly off of level. It's uh, not even quite the same plane. One side is slightly different than the other, but that just shows you that this structure doesn't have to be perfect to be very functional. There you have an 11 cubic meter capacity uh, ready mix truck backing underneath it. You can see there's lots of clearance above that hopper there. It's a tandem steer unit, one of the bigger ones on the market. So this uh, arch, as you see it, would be enough for clearance for uh, large highway trucks. It would be very easy to increase the height on this just by putting one more square block underneath the bottom of it. 